sports rule books don't just come into existence fully formed. You don't nail it in one, you know? You build a skeleton that you don't know what the meat's gonna look like, you just know it's gonna kind of fill it out and you'll tinker a bit, but you'll get those bones looking good. Okay, that visual aside, there are so many rules that exist because a player or a coach tried something and then the league said, oh, didn't think of that one, but yeah, we need to get rid of that, you can't do that. The air buds of the real world. The air buds of the real world. And if you are one of these air buds, you might be the last person ever to get to do something. And with that in mind, I would like to talk about the NHL goalie who tried to skate the entire length of the ice and score a goal. Yeah, sweet. More of that. <laughs> All of the rules seemingly that exist to involve goalkeepers are basically like, stop playing hockey. We're gonna play hockey. You stay in the fucking net and mind the goal. And even before any of what we're talking about, there are rules that are like, well, you can't hold the puck for more than three seconds. You can't hide the puck. You can't, and we've talked about this one before, you can't pile up snow to block the puck from going into the net. I'm pretty sure they're also the only player not allowed to smoke during the game. <laughs> they can only smoke cigarillos. Is the <laughs> but if you're smoking, you have to have a full plexi shield, so it, you're just hotboxing yourself. So all of those goalie buzz kills, all that stuff they can't do, that's stashed in rule 67. But the rule I want to talk about and the rule that has a specific origin that we're about to discuss is rule 27.7, which very simply says, if a goalie participates in any sort of play, intentionally playing the puck when you're beyond that center red line, it's a minor penalty. Okay. That, I mean... It's reasonable. I assume that is kind of the like grandfather of the goalie rules where then everything is working back from that. Well, so you would think, but as far as I know, some of that stuff about what the goalie can do with the puck is older. And that rule uh, has a specific start date and it's from the 66-67 season. It's not that old. Yeah, I would have figured that they would have got all that sorted out by the 60s. <laughs> No, so in fact, it took a lovely gentleman by the name of Gary Smith uh, to bring that rule into existence. Hello. So Gary Smith, uh, first of all, 6'4", big old goalie. Mm. Gare the he... bear. Mm. Gare the bear, I said. All right. He was actually nicknamed Suitcase Smith because he played for so many different teams. That's pretty good. And for our purposes, I don't know how to put this. Gary Smith had an interesting take on problem solving. Sometimes he would clear the puck out of the crease by drop kicking it, by like literally punting the puck. Which feels like lofting a knife into the air in the form of your skate blade. Like I would assume pretty early on in the rule book, it's like, oh, no kicking. Like, let's just get that blanket rule. No, do not for any reason really kick. Listen, I looked hard at that. As far as I can tell, there is nothing that says you cannot drop kick. <laughs> I like that this gives the possibility of some like fucked up version of Gary Smith who is like, your rule book doesn't say I couldn't kick him in the throat with my skate. <laughs> no. So Gary Smith, yeah, uh, used to punt pucks. He once got really hungry during a game and he solved that problem by ordering hot dogs to the bench. Uh, he once got <laughs> pulled from a game. Hang on, hang on. How does, like, so he would have to, the thing I can't get past on that is like, no one killed it before he was able to get the hot dogs. What's the problem? He's on the bench. It's easy. Yeah, shit. Maybe this is I'm being a I'm being a complete concessions prude right now. Yeah. Let the players eat. So Gary is a problem solver. And early in his career he faced the grand existential challenge that a lot of young players face, which is that he was deeply worried he was gonna get cut and his NHL career would end immediately. He was like a backup to the backup to the backup on a very, very good Toronto Maple Leafs team that actually won the Stanley Cup in his second season. So in December of 1966, he is sitting on the bench, hanging out, watching a game between the Maple Leafs and the Canadians. He has hardly played at all that season, but there are a couple injuries, some fights, some people get pulled. And he's been talking so much trash during the game and having so much fun from the bench that the coach is basically like, hey, get out there. You seem like you're enthusiastic and, uh, you know, ready for anything. Go play some hockey. How is that the determining factor? 
hey, uh, no one's really giving a shit, but you're talking a lot of trash. <laughs> yeah, go do that out there. So Smith comes into the game playing goaltender and immediately gives up a couple goals, and he's kind of eating shit. Sure. So Gary, the man who ordered hot dogs to the bench and occasionally drop kicked the puck out of the crease, said, I know what I can do to prove myself. I'm going to score a goal. Gary as a problem solver really is confounding because when you play a position that has the word goal in the name of it. Yeah, goal scorer. Yeah, I guess if you stopped reading, you would focus too much on that. <laughs> but the, the act of tending the goal. I tend to score. <laughs> Stupid. So Gary ends up catching a puck in his glove, one of the few saves he had on the evening. So he says, now is my opportunity. Puts the puck down on the ice and starts handling. He passes the red line. He passes the blue line. He is now way further than a goalkeeper ever goes these days. In territory not yet explored by any tender. He had no way of knowing that he could actually breathe over there, let alone score. <laughs> right, because there was so much smoke down there. Uh, since all yeah, the players from, were there from the other and... goalie hotboxing, yeah. <laughs> right. He's about ready to try and attempt a shot. When a player on Montreal, uh, J.C. Tremblay, who as far as I can tell is not like a major heavy hitter, just sure. drills him. That's awesome. Tremblay, like six cups, something like that. Usually you feel like these are the stories where like, yeah, you don't know anyone involved. You often don't even recognize the names of the teams. No, and on that note, uh, Tim Horton was involved in this game. Tim Horton, <laughs> he of the donuts. He saw Gary Smith's teeth coming out and he thought of Timbits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So as Gary Smith describes it, he describes himself spinning and sort of gets sort of like a strobe effect of with each spin, he sees the Canadians going the other way and he left the net empty. But one of his teammates, thankfully, stepped in and prevented them from scoring. And then was awarded the, the role of starting goaltender the next game. <laughs> yeah. Smith is on his it, fucking way. <laughs> easily could have gone that way. I love that basically what Gary Smith was, was describing was like a head injury. Like the next day, did he miss practice because of combat fatigue? Like the way that everyone was talking about that shit in the 60s and 70s is so, yeah, I was spinning around and I heard some noises. and Yeah, I could, uh, I could smell colors for a few days, but then I came back. Right. So it wasn't a good scene. He describes trying to scramble back into the goal and tripping repeatedly on his way back. And immediately, the head of the Referees Association, like, I think there's a quote from the same week, if not the next day, saying, uh-uh, we do not want goaltenders carrying the puck down the ice like that. We're making a rule as soon as possible. And that is where Rule 27.7 .7 came into existence. I think the one thing that's, like, really unfortunate with how this played out is there's an opportunity for Gare to be, like, a pioneer and create a world where goalies are actually, like, encouraged to go do this. Because had he made his way down there, shot, scored, not received a concussion, it sounds like, from Trump, like, <laughs> like I don't think the NHL sees that and they're like, oh, we need to change that. They, they right. would celebrate goalies scoring because that is, like... Badass. So you're suggesting basically this is a tremendous fork in the road for the entire sport of hockey where if he goes out there and does a few spin moves and stiff arms someone and then puts the puck yep. through his legs and scores, then the NHL is like, oh, well, this we should steer this way and this should be the entire direction of the league from now. Then fast forward to present day and everyone's a goalie. It's 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 20 on 20 goalies and everyone is 6'4", and everyone's eating hot dogs. All the goalies are smoking. It's a better <laughs> world. It's the world in which I want to live. Thanks for watching Weird Rules. You can click here or here to see more cool stuff like that, or click subscribe to get notified every time we release more stuff.